Evening all. Um, this is a video about Richard of Conisberg, um, who was Richard III's and Edward IV's grandfather. Now, um, probably a lot of people have heard of Richard, Duke of York, Richard III's father. Um, but Richard of Conisberg is a less well-known figure, uh, the grandfather of Richard III, the father of Richard, Duke of York. And yet, um, in some ways, the events of his life marked the real beginning of what later became the Wars of the Roses, uh, the dynastic struggle for the throne between um, various branches of the royal family. Now, who was Richard of Conisberg then? Um, well, Richard of, Con Richard of Conisberg, who later became Earl of Cambridge, was the son of Edmund of Langley, who was um, one of the youngest sons of King Edward III. And Edmund of Langley was the Duke of York, the first Duke of York. Now, Richard had an older brother called Edward, and um, Edward later became the second Duke of York, um, rather than Richard, who became Earl of Cambridge. Now, um, there's a bit of a mystery behind Richard's birth, because um, his father um, basically disowned him in his will and um, left him with nothing. And there are rumours that maybe um, Richard's mother um, a lady called Isabella of Castile, or Isabella of Castile, I should say, um, may have um, had Richard with a relationship with somebody else. I mean, various suggestions have been made, like the Earl of Exeter. But um, there's no proof of any of that. It is, it is just speculation. But he seems to have had a problem relationship with his father, Edmund, Duke of York. Um, and um, maybe it was just because he was the younger son, but... Um, he was basically disowned in his father's will. However, his mother, Isabella of Castile, um, did um, make sure that she left in her will provision for Richard via uh, the then king, King Richard II. And Richard II paid um, young Richard of Conisberg an allowance. Um, he was, of course, um, his cousin. But... Um, when Richard II was usurped by Henry Bolingbroke, um, who became Henry IV, the first Lancastrian king, um, Richard's allowance started to be either paid very sporadically or not paid at all, which may have been the, the, the root of Richard's problem with the um, Lancastrian line. Now, um, Richard of Conisberg never claimed the throne for himself and never claimed the throne for the House of York. And that's because in the, um, the, you know, the dynastic family tree, uh, the Lancastrians are descended from John of Gaunt, who was an older son of Edward III than Edmund of Langley, Richard's father, the Duke of York. So that the Yorkist line never actually claimed the throne at that point for themselves. But um, Richard became um, involved and then married um, a lady called Anne Mortimer. And Anne Mortimer was a descendant of the second son of Edward III, um, a man called Lionel, Duke of Clarence, who was older than John of Gaunt. And really, the descendants of Lionel, um, Duke of Clarence, um, were the true heirs of King Richard II, and not the Lancastrians, who were descended from John of Gaunt, who was the third son of Edward III. And that meant that um, when Richard, in 1415, um, seems to have fallen out completely with the second Lancastrian king, Henry V, the famous Henry V of Agincourt, he looked to um, Clarence's descendants um, and he looked to his wife's family um, for an alternative candidate for the throne. And Anne Mortimer's brother was a chap called Edmund, uh, another Edmund in the story, um, and Edmund um, was the chap that uh, Richard of Conisberg wanted to be king instead of the Lancastrians. So the Wars of the Roses actually began not with the Yorkist line claiming the throne, but with a um, senior figure in the Yorkist line, Richard, trying to put um, Edmund, the descendant of Lionel, Duke of Clarence, on the throne instead of Henry V. Now, um, this is what was known as the Southampton Plot. 
and it was a conspiracy to overthrow Henry V in 1415 and put um, Edmund on the throne in his place. Um, the plot seems to have been Richard's idea, Richard of Conisberg, and we don't really know what motivated him, but it was probably or possibly um, the fact that the Lancastrians weren't paying him his allowance and he was basically one of the poorest nobles in England. He was Earl of Cambridge, but he was extremely cash-strapped. And at the time, Henry was about to invade France. As some of you probably know, he did in 1415, and it ended up with the famous Battle of Agincourt, which was a massive victory for Henry V. But Henry was about to um, invade France, and Richard, um, being incredibly poor, um, undoubtedly didn't want to have to go because if he went on this campaign he would have to fork out for him, fork out for the soldiers. And that may have been a motive as well behind his um, conspiracy. But um, he did um, try and put his brother-in-law Edmund on the throne. Unfortunately Edmund, um, who seems to have become aware of the plot in the later stages, went straight to Henry V and grasped everybody else up and was having nothing to do with it. And so Richard and the other conspirators involved in this were arrested. And although Edmund obviously was just pardoned, um, the other conspirators, including Richard, the other senior conspirators, were tried and executed. And in 1415, Richard of Conisberg therefore met his end at the hands of the Lancastrian King Henry V. He had, by this point, a son, also called Richard, uh, with Anne Mortimer and when Edmund um, you know Anne Mortimer's brother died childless that meant that through Anne Mortimer Richard of Conisberg's son Richard became in a sense the heir to the throne or the alternative king to the Lancastrians and um, essentially had a much better claim to the throne of the Lancastrians because he was descended from the second son of Edward III through his mother Anne Mortimer um, than the third son John of Gaunt whom the Lancastrians were descended from. And um, when Richard of Conisberg's older brother Edward the second Duke of York was killed in the Battle of Agincourt and had no children that meant that the title Duke of York passed to Richard of Conisberg's son, Richard, who became third Duke of York. And Richard, Duke of York, was of course the father of Richard III, and um, the, the man who presided over um, the, the start of the real um, fighting in the Wars of the Roses in the 1450s. But um, although um, most people study Richard, Duke of York, and then go on to study Edward IV and Richard III, um, I still think that it's worth remembering um, the grandfather of Richard III, Richard of Conisberg, because the events of his life um, in many ways set the scene for what follows. It doesn't make, mean that the Wars of the Roses and the fighting and the battles were in any way inevitable, I'm not suggesting that, but the seeds of some of the dynastic conflict um, lie um, in that very early period in the 15th century um, up to 1450. Anyway, um, the best book on Richard of Conisberg, there's not a great deal written about him unfortunately, um, is probably this one here. It's actually called Henry V and the Southampton Plot by um, a man called T.B. Pugh, um, but um, it's excellent on the life of Richard of Conisberg as well as the Southampton Plot against Henry V and um, you know, explains the importance of this event and this person um, quite well. Anyway, thanks for listening.